Welcome to Execute and Callback Anatomy. A little bit of Python goes a long way here in Touch Designer, and we're going to start by looking at some of the execute stats. Let's go ahead and use the tab key to open up the operate dialog. Let's add a constant chop here into the network. And let's also open up the opcreate dialog and let's just search for all the execute dats. Now we can see there are a handful of different execute dats. Executes respond to events. And in touch center events are single moment occurrences that are generated from a set of conditions. So let's take a look at the chop execute to see what that might mean. So here in our chop execute, we have a set of events that we can match against off to on, while on, on to off, while off, and value change. So let's go ahead and see how we might trigger one of those. Let's drag our constant onto our chops parameter. And let's take a look at this value change parameter first. So we can see there's a parameter called value change that's toggled to on, and there's a corresponding method called on value change inside of our chop execute. This method is what's going to run while this toggle is on. So if we want to enable any of these methods, we need to make sure that their corresponding toggle is set over here in the chop executes parameters. Let's go ahead and see how we might make that work. So let's split our workspace. Let's go ahead and set up a uh, text port over here on the right hand side. And I'm just going to shrink this a little bit. Next, we're going to make our chop execute viewer active. We can use the A key or the viewer active flag in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to go ahead and just print out hello world. We're going to go ahead and put that inside of a set of parentheses. And we're going to also enclose that inside a set of single quotes. OK, now let's go ahead and change our constant. Now we can see anytime this parameter changes, anytime this channel changes, we run this on value change method. So if we move this all around, we can see that, that correspondingly uh, runs this little bit of Python every time our value changes. So let's clear out our text port and take a look at some of these other conditions. How about on off to on? This time let's print running off to on. Now I'm going to come back to our chop execute. I'm going to make sure I turn on the off to on toggle and turn off this value change toggle. Now I can change this value all I want, but it isn't until I head all the way back down to zero and then from zero cross over into a positive value that we have an off to on event. This is really helpful because it means anytime we cross from zero to on or to greater than zero, we consider that a triggering event. Now we could think of this the same way if we want to know when do we get to zero or zero and below. Let's go ahead and use our on to off. So we're going to print here running on to off. Let's make sure that that is toggled on. And now we should see that anytime we're greater than zero, we're off to on. And if we go down to zero, we're on to off. That's excellent. That's really powerful, useful in a lot of ways. But how can we use that here inside of Touch Designer? Well, let's go ahead and add an LFO. So with our LFO chop here in our network, let's similarly right click on the output, head over to DATS. We're going to grab a chop execute. We'll drop that in our network. We're going to turn off value change. Let's turn on off to on and let's turn on on to off. And let's also add a text top here into our network. Now what I want to do is I want to change this parameter called text. So let's take a look at how we might do that. So here I'm going to make my chop execute viewer active. And when we go from off to on, I'm going to set my operator whose text one, it's dot parameter dot text is going to be set to running. And when I go from on to off, let's do a similar operation. So our operator text one, whose parameter is text is going to be set to not running. And now what we can see is that when our value crosses greater than zero, once we cross above zero, we switch to running. And anytime we hit zero or below, we switch to not running. Let's go ahead and turn on the word wrap there.
So this is one way that we might think about using a chop execute, but we might also use the same ideas, or in fact, the same ideas are present in any of our operators that have callbacks. So for example, if we take a look at a timer, a timer has a docked operator. You can see here this little purple square at the bottom of our timer. If we click on that, we can see there's a whole nother dat that's attached to our timer. This contains a set of callbacks, and our callbacks have a list of all of the different events that run in correspondence with our timer. So we can see, for example, on ready, on start, on done. These are different events that we can take advantage of to run a little bit of Python. And we would do the same kind of ideas, but we would write that little bit of code that we wanted to run inside of this method. This is just a quick look at the anatomy of how we can think about uh, executes and callbacks, and there's lots of things that we can do with them.